Uh, hello everyone and welcome to a knowledge sharing session on uh, uh, banks treatment import to fusion cash management. Uh, in this session, we are going to discuss like we will import a MT940 bank statement. Uh, uh, for ease, for better explanation, what I'm going to, I'm going to do that uh, I'm going to take an internal bank account and we will prepare a bank statement file itself uh, in MT9 for compliant MT940 so that I can explain each and every different tag used in the MT940 and the values which will be used in the bank statement MT9, MT940 uh, template. So before we before we go to that, uh, let us see the few setups. So uh, assume that the organization has a bank account, its internal bank account. Uh, this is the bank account name, the bank account number, the currency is uh, USD. So I, I will just go through the important uh, relevant point to the bank statement import. Uh, apart from that, one more thing, we will refer the parsing rule set. So just keep it in mind that this is a parsing rule set we have attached to the bank statement. So these are the few things, uh, the bank account name, number, currency, the parsing rule set. Uh, now, how are we going to use the parsing rule set? Let me just explain that. Assume that uh, the bank, the, uh, the OCBC bank from where we have this bank account attached, I'll assume that uh, as an organization, we sent a check of check number, let us say 2001, with the amount of, let us say 2000 USD to the bank for the, for the, for the remittance, as a remittance. So assume that whenever they send back the bank statement saying that this particular check got in cash, they send like this. In the text, they send like REC for receipt, and the check number. If they say it's a payment, they say it pay and the check number. If they send this kind of thing to, to us in the bank statement. Now, as we know that whenever auto, automatic reconciliation we do, one of the important point is in the bank statement, what we load with which we reconcile is reconciliation reference. So we are getting this particular line from bank, but in fact, in my system, the check number is 2001, but, but the bank is sending me this text. Now in this kind of situation, what, what we are going to do that we will instruct the Oracle application saying that go to the particular field, take the complete text, read all the thing after this kind of text. So after this kind of text, all the things is 2001. Populate that in 2001. Populate that in uh, a reconciliation reference. This is in the case of when we deposit some money. So this is a receivable. Similarly, if we have a payment, then we are going to instruct that go to the particular field in the bank statement. Read all the thing after this kind of fixed text and populate that in reconciliation reference. Whenever we have to do this kind of uh, uh, truncating or uh, parsing kind of thing, we use the parsing rule set. So this is just one example. Let me just uh, show you how we are going to configure that. Another point, whenever the bank will send a receipt, they will use one particular transaction code. Assume that transaction code is NAR uh, R. Whenever they send a payment, let us say they send as an NAPP. So this transaction code we need to define in our system. So I explained many things, let us go one by one. First thing, 
we have to define the transaction codes. Okay. So let me define the transaction code in system. I have already defined it. I will just go through it. So like NAPP is AR payment, NARD, it's not R, it's AR deposit. So these are the two transaction code I have defined. So this is one of the step. After that, we are going to define the parsing rule set. And there we are going to give the instruction how to truncate the data. So I have defined a parse rule set. Just because this is the parse rule set I have attached to the particular bank account. So whenever we import a bank statement for the particular bank account, it will go to the bank account setup. It will check what parse rule set is defined. And then it will come to this particular definition. So here I'm saying, if in the bank statement, transaction code is NARB, then, Whatever value is there, this is the source field. For the customer reference, take that particular value. Do this operation. This is the rule. And whatever the result you get, populate that in the target field. That's what we are doing in the parse rule setup. So let us take the first rule. What Oracle application will do if it has to follow this rule? If the bank statement is related to this parse rule set, and if the bank statement contains a, a line with the transaction code NARD, then it will check the value given in the customer reference. Assume that value given in the is like this. Okay. Then here I'm saying that read REC and the colon. After that, whatever number, whatever text you get, take that value and populate that in reconciliation reference. Similarly, if the bank statement code is NAPP, then do that operation. Then check, take the text as pay column and take rest of the text and populate in the reconciliation reference. I hope this parsable set is uh, understood. So uh, after this, uh, let us create a bank statement file. It will go to the bank account number, the bank account. What is the account number? That will come with a tag 20. Account number is 11, whatever account number is there, that we are putting. Next line is with tag 25. Here we give the account name slash the account number. Account name slash account number. The tag 28C is for bank statement ID. So let me just, this I've already imported, so I will import new one. So let us give a new bank statement ID. So this complete text is a bank statement ID. Tag 60F, it is for the opening balance of the bank account. So assume that I'm sending this bank statement for Fifth of November, fifth of November, two thousand twenty-one. So this is the date. 
5th November 2021. C is the credit balance. So if the balance is any amount in credit is uh, denoted by C, any amount in debit to the bank is denoted with D. So we have a credit balance. What is the currency? That's USD bank account. So currency of the bank account and the account balance. So let me just put this as a 2000. So this is the opening balance of the bank account on this date in this currency. Next, a particular transaction means payment or receipt. So that is denoted by tag 61. Uh, let me change, assume that this particular transaction has been done on this date. After this, this is a simply in a month and date format. Is it a credit transaction or debit transaction? So let us assume that I am depositing the money, so it will be credit, means it's AR receivable. And let me put the amount as, let us say, 2,500. So credit is the deposit. This is the complete amount. After the amount, what is the transaction code? So transaction code is NARD. If you recall, this is what I have set. So that is the transaction code. So this complete line, this complete line is for the transaction code NARD. Okay? After that comes the customer reference. The customer reference I am putting like REC colon R2. Let me just change the number to 3001. I'm saying that I have the it's a deposit to account of amount 2500 with the check number R3001. If you want to remove the R, we can remove that. Let us remove it. Let us keep it in memory. So it's a receipt with check number this. So this transaction line is complete. Next is another transaction. So I assume this is a deposit. Uh, so this is this is a withdrawal, means it's an AP payment kind of thing. So here it will be marked in debit. And let me just put a 500 of withdrawal with what is the transaction code? This is NAPP. And the check number is, let us say, 4001. So I'm just importing two, two transactions. If there are more transactions, we can just keep on adding that data with the tag 61. Opening balance was 2000, 2000 USD. Deposit 2500, withdrawal 500. So my closing balance will be 4000. So now this line is a closing balance, 62F. So it's a credit balance on fifth with amount 4,000. And this is, is available balance. Many a times the available balance and the closing balance may be different. So we have another type for the available balance. In, my, in our case, assume both are same. So this is the, now let me just uh, save this with a different file name. Let me just put file name as three. So as I said earlier, I'm going to create a bank statement file for my bank, bank account. So this is what I have done. I just edited the things according to my bank's uh, bank account situation uh, position. Okay, now let us import this bank, this bank statement. To import that, we have to go to the different, two different ways of doing. I'm just following one way. Go to scheduled process. Schedule new process. Load import. It's 
taking a bit of time. So it's MT940, so this is what I'm selecting. Uh, we are, if it is another format, then you have to select the process according to that. <laughs> then file name, the file, I have saved the file locally. So I will select it from there. This is the file which, which I just created. Okay. It will take a bit of time. So I will pause the video and come back when it is completed. So the uh, process got completed, succeeded. Now, so this would have imported the bank statement. Let me just go to the bank statement inquiry window, manage bank statement. This is the bank account. Let me query it. Okay. So let us see one by one. Oh, I think I closed the bank statement. So let me open it once again. So as I just said the bank statement ID is this one. This is the bank statement ID. It got imported. Let us open it. Opening balance 2000. Opening balance 2000. Closing balance 4000. Closing balance 4000. Now let us review the statements. First statement transaction code NARD. This is the one. We were expecting this is the field which went into customer reference. From there, I say truncate this text and take only this number and populate that in reconciliation reference. That was my pass rule set. So you can see the reconciliation reference got populated here. Customer reference, if you see, this is the customer reference. This is the complete field according to this file, this data. So from there, it removed this text and rest of the text is populated into the reconciliation reference. This has been done according to the parcel setup what we have done. The rest all are self-explanatory. Let us see the second line. Transaction code NAPP. See the check number 4001. It came here. Customer reference is this one. So you can just see by using the parcel set, depending on the transaction code, we can set a different types of rule to populate not only for reconciliation reference, we can populate any other field, what more fields are available in the target field list of value in the parse rule set. I hope, uh, so that is it from my side. I hope this video is helpful to understand the MT940, what are the different tags here, which, which tag is for the bank account, which tag is for the statement uh, for the transactions. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.